get it right. Welcome, fellow Toastmasters and guests to this meeting of online presenters. We have now begun. Now guests, please note that in order to be a member of our club, you must be a current or former active member of Toastmasters International and have completed at least six Toastmasters official speeches or Alternately, if you have substantial relevant presentation experience, you may apply for membership after demonstrating your ability in a two to three minute speech delivered during one of our club meetings. All requests for membership are subject to approval by the members of our club. If you have not already done so, please change your panel to ensure that it shows your name as well as the role that you are doing today. You can do so by right clicking and then selecting rename. We have members and guests from many countries throughout the world. Thus, as a professional organization, we ask that you please be aware of language and word usage that may be considered offensive or otherwise insensitive due to cultural differences. Please note that our meeting is being recorded and your video or audio contribution may be used for club marketing purposes. He's on vacation, but not vacation from us here at Online Presenters. The founding members, or one of the founding members of our club, who stepped up to be president to lead us through the rest of the year. Help me welcome David Clark. Thank you, Joni. So, yes, I, I actually am in the uh, out somewhere in the Caribbean. Uh, steaming back towards Fort Lauderdale to end a cruise. Uh, but we did purchase the, the high-speed Wi-Fi uh, package, so figured I should give it a little bit of a workout. Uh, I can't stay for the whole meeting, but I did want to be here to welcome you, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see uh, Tiger back here, uh, an early member of the club, back coming back to visit. Eh, maybe, maybe we can lure him back in as well as a uh, first time guest, uh, Stephanie and Henry, who's been visiting with us uh, several times and is interested in joining. One, one thing I just did want to take a moment to talk about before I hand things off to our Toastmaster of the day is David, you froze. Okay. So, so we got some we got some uh, excitement out of that. We got to be among the pioneers of figuring out how to do good Toastmasters meetings online. And we also developed a specialty of not just bringing the traditional Toastmasters meeting online, but focusing on online presentation excellence. And, and you can learn things from many different members of this club about different aspects of that. Uh, but we're here not just as a way of delivering a standard Toastmasters meeting, but with a focus on doing online presentations really well. So that these are skills you can take to your professional webinar or your professional training course. So that's the, the mission of the club. And I think though, because a lot of people have gotten exposure to doing Toastmasters online, sometimes more exposure to it than they wanted to get. We have to go back and revisit the topic and show why it's important to learn how to not just do it, but to do it right, and to do it well, uh, and do it to do develop expertise. And that's the, the mission of this club. And there, there are a couple of things about that that I would like to do in early next year we would like to do again our webinar contest. So th this is something that was born at this club. It is a contest that is not just trying to do the international speech contest, but doing it online, but a contest that is designed to test the speaker's ability to use the online medium effectively. So I'm looking at maybe January 15th, for the following week for that. Uh, think about that. If anybody has schedule conflicts during that time, I know Kim is somebody who wanted to compete. Uh, Andrew wanted to compete. 
let me know if there are any particular schedule considerations there. But let's try and get that on the books. And I, we, we've tried a different, few different formats of this. I would like to invite in contestants from other clubs uh, and perhaps uh, one thing to do to make it fair if we're going to host it here is to have the judges come in from outside of online presenters. So to recruit judges from, from elsewhere, uh, hold, hold the meeting here. Uh, and some of you know that there, we, we've run into some drama over the years trying to organize things that were supposed to be led by multiple clubs because we don't have an, a, an official district organization. Toastmasters International has kind of, uh, the, the bureaucracy has gotten in our way, let's say. Uh, but if we just do it under the authority of online presenters, we can certainly invite in participation from elsewhere. Uh, so think about that for early next year and uh, potentially also doing something along the lines of the BTM Con or EVV Con events that we've done in, bringing in some bigger guest speakers, putting on a bigger event, Again, doing it just under the umbrella of our club because we don't necessarily have a bigger organizational unit uh, to work through these things. So uh, I just wanna throw those out there as some ideas for next year. Start thinking about the webinar contest in particular, whether that's something that you'd like to compete in. Uh, if you're not gonna compete in it, we're gonna be recruiting you to, to do some other report supporting role uh, and certainly trying to publicize and making a, a big deal out of it. Because part, a big part of the point is to invite people to come visit this club and see that this club is wonderful, full of great people, and that they're going to want to come back. So I actually can't stay tonight because uh, I am on a cruise and I have to pay some attention to my wife or... Uh, or I may be invited to take a leap off the side of the, the ship. So, uh, but uh, other than that, uh, I wish you a great meeting and I would like to introduce our Toastmaster today. The wonderful, the fabulous Carolina Ramirez uh, will be taking us through from here. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Mr. President, have a nice trip. The theme today is time management. Time management is the process of organizing and planning how to divide your time between different activities. Get it right and you'll end up working smarter, smarter, not harder, to get more done in less time, even when time is tight and pressures are high. Here you can see 10 time management tips. To boost, to boost your productivity. The first, set clear goals. There, complete the most important tasks first, invest in a proper to-do list, set a time limit for each task, eliminate distractions, use the classic Pomodoro technique, delegate tasks, set realistic, realistic deadlines, learn to say no, reflect and adjust. And you can use the Eisenhower matrix in order to achieve the tip number two, complete the most important task first. If you have something important and urgent, do it now. Important and not urgent, decide, schedule a time for it. Not important, but urgent, delegate, who can do it for you? And everything else, delegate it. Eliminate from your list that task. Saying this, I want to continue with the tip of the day. And the person in charge of doing that today is Andrew Byrne. Welcome, Andrew, with the tip of the day. Thank you very much, Carolina. What I wanted to share with you is that the Zoom platform that we use is one of four platforms that Zoom has. You have the Zoom meeting rooms like we're in right now. You also have the Zoom webinar, which is a completely different platform and it looks different when you're doing it. 
You also have Zoom events, and you have another platform, which is Zoom conference. So you have four different platforms. We routinely use the Zoom meeting room, but you do have other platforms that have different benefits for you. For example, if you're on Zoom webinar, you can keep track of who's in your meeting. You don't see everybody. You know, we talk about in contests that you're seeing everybody and turning off their uh, their buttons so that you're not seeing them during the screen. In webinars, and you've gone to other companies' webinars, you don't see everybody. Uh, so that's a completely different thing with Zoom webinar. Uh, Zoom conference is also very different. It's designed for a multi-day, multi-channel kind of a conference all on Zoom, and it's very large. So those are some of the differences. But if you look at your Zoom after the meeting, ask yourself, are you on 5.16.10? 5.16.10. One of the first things you'll see is you'll see that there are buttons on your screen that show summary, AI companion, and whiteboards and notes. The difference about the whiteboards that are showing up now is that you can save them and use them outside the time that you're using the whiteboard. Same thing for notes. So if you want to take notes or you're in the meeting and you take those notes, it can be available to you outside of the meeting as well. The benefit of the summary in the AI companion is that when you go back to your information later, you can have complete notations of your entire meeting and a summary of the meeting. So if you go and look at uh, a composition that you have of, of the meeting saved, you can go back and see a written summary of everything that was done and a reactions, everything that you would want is right there for you. So that's one thing to know about with uh, AI, uh, with the AI companion and the summary as part of Zoom. There are additional changes that have come on Zoom. I can talk about that in the future, but for right now, I want you to be aware that it's important to look to update their Zoom is updating now once or twice a week, and they're adding other companies that are integrated, and they're a great facility for you. So we'll get back at another time about additional features or delve into the features and see what it does. Uh, but you can see all these features listed on your meeting, on your backroom meeting, and you can see a section for AI companion, a section for summary, and a section for your notes. And you go back and it's saved for you. All right, back to you, Carolina. Thank you very much, Andy, for that tip of the day. During this meeting, we have several roles that will be helping us to improve our speakings and speaking and leadership skills. One of them is the timer. And the timer today is Kirtika. Welcome, Kirtika, to explain your role. Thank you, Carolina. I'm Kritika. Today, as a timer, I will be noting the minuscule of everybody's participation in the prepared speech, a revenue, and the table topics, which is going to happen as a three-part section in our meeting. So for the prepared speech, the timing goes by five to seven minutes. By five minutes, I'll glow green. By six, I'll glow yellow. And by seven, there will be a red light. For table topics, it's going to be one to two minutes. One glows with green and 1.30 seconds it glows with yellow and for two minutes i'll lower red similarly for tabletop for uh, reviewing section the reviewers can take two to three minutes to go with green two minutes and 30 seconds with yellow and red for three minutes this will be the uh, pattern that we'll be following today and over to you carolina thank you very much the encounter today is Antoinette Trim. Good evening, good morning to everyone. Being the 
our counter today. I am happy to remind everyone about not to use or find the, as the best as you can to not to use filler words like ah, you know, even unusually long pauses. And when I'm told to report, I would gladly do so. Back to you. Thank you very much, Antoinette. I miss you. The grammarian today is Andre. Um, thank you very much, uh, Madam Toastmaster of the day, and my fellow online presenters, guests, it's good to see you. My role for this evening is a uh, grammarian, and my role is completely opposite to what Antoinette Trim is going to do. I will be carefully listening to particularly good use of English language, simile, figures of speech, Hyperbole and other forms of English language will be duly noted. More than that, I will introduce the word of the day and I encourage you to use this word as often and appropriate as you can. And I will be counting carefully. I put a word of the day is effectiveness in the chat and I will do it again. And you can see it on your right hand side. I'm not going to give you a definition. You can read it, encourage you to use it, and nice, beautiful English language as well. And I give a short report at the end of the meeting. Back to you, Madam Tosmasa of the evening. Thank you very much, Andre. The water today is Mr. Jim Barber. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and happy tomorrow to everybody else. As the watcher this evening, I, I enjoy being watcher because it's a role that is technically it's illegal in most countries, but it's allowed here at Online Presenters. I'm going to be watching everybody. I'm going to be watching you carefully. In effect, I am the visual grammarian to Andre's normal grammarian. He's going to be determining whether or not we talk good. I'm going to be saying whether or not we look good. That's it, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you very much, Andre. Jim, sorry, Jim. The chat monitor today is Henry, Henry Gruyere. Good evening, good morning, all, and good afternoon. Uh, the chat monitor, my role is to um, monitor the chat that's happening on the right-hand side. If there's any chats that get, gets missed by somebody, I can maybe just raise my hand and then inform you of that uh, message that's been sent to your attention. Um, and I will report back at the next uh, at the end of the meeting if that's required. Thank you. Back to you, Toast, Toastmaster. Thank you very much. I will be the vote counter of this meeting. I will put a link in the chat and you will vote for your favorite and for your favorite for best speaker, best evaluator and best improvised speaker. Now it's time for the prepared speeches section, my favorite. The first speaker that we have today, and the only speaker we have, is a division director. She served as an area director last year, and she will be assisting the past district director to plan an award ceremony for the 2022 and 2023 Toastmasters year. She will be detailing her plan to build a team to execute the event. This speech is part of Motivational Strategies, Path Level 5, Demonstrating Expertise. The title is Let's Celebrate a Great Year. Please welcome Johnny Laidlaw. Celebrate a great year. 
Welcome everyone to the red carpet experience. The effectiveness of an award ceremony generally tends to fall on whether or not persons actually feel, well, motivated. So it was my job to ensure that we motivate others. Now I'm looking at everybody wondering if we can hear. So welcome to the red carpet. Grant, what club are you from and what path and goal are you on? Me? What path and goal am I on? Look, I'm doing 14 paths, so it's really quite confusing. But the current one that I'm working on is innovative planning, and I'm at level four. Woohoo! All the way to level four. Now I'm going to ask, Henry, what path have you settled on or are you still undecided? Henry looks like a deer in the headlights. Would you prefer if I'd asked you? Sorry, no, no, designer? no. I, I thought Andy. Sorry, no, I didn't hear Henry. Yet. So I will be visual presentations. So if I'm, yeah, when when I get when I join, I will pick the visual presentations uh, path. Presentation mastery. Love that yes. part. It helps with all of the glamour that you see happening here. Andrew. What path are you on? Again, we didn't hear who you asked that question of, Andrew. Joni. Andrew. What path are you on? You're not really coming through very, very clearly. I am doing leadership development, and uh, I think I'm on four or five, somewhere around there. All right. And Antoinette. What path are you on? Level three of visionary communication. Now, doesn't it feel good when not only are you recognized for achieving, but letting everyone know, Andrew, if you need help when it comes to public relations, Henry is going to be doing the path that, well, that will be effective for. That's always the point of a celebration. It's always good to have, hey, kudos, good job. Here's a pat on the back. This is what our district did this year to get to this level. But sometimes we lose in the hurrah, fanfare, and fireworks the motivation behind it. The motivation is also a part of the connection why you're doing what you're doing, and also the ability to connect people to others who have actually achieved. Case in point, when a celebration is done, you would have heard Joni Laidlaw. She did presentation mastery and she did it up to level five. If that's the case, if you ever have a question that your mentor can't answer because they're not on your path, you already know. That's the importance of an award ceremony. Well, in my view anyway, and that's the whole point of why we're connecting. But I can tell you if it's at the beginning of the awards, it's gonna kind of be boring to go what I just did, right? And because of that, I am getting two of the hypest. We're in international company, so don't worry, I'll translate. Most entertaining, most exciting, most vibe filled host from here in Jamaica to bring it to the district in North Carolina that I'm a division director for. See, that's the beauty of the online space. We get to connect all over. And in doing the red carpet and in getting everybody to engage, to discuss, to share where they are, even if it's just, ooh, I was thinking about that path. And I mean, I was thinking of asking everybody who your designer was, but considering I think that nobody will be wearing pants, probably just from the top up, might not be a question that I want them to ask because I may not want the answer depending on how it might go. That's going to be the fun. The fun is going to be the entertainment, the red carpet, the conversations brought in in a fun, exciting manner leading in to the actual awards where everyone gets recognized. That's 
will be the difference. That will be how we celebrate for District 117. We're going to walk the red carpet. We're going to engage. We're going to connect. And overall, we're going to make everyone know why it's important to be on a path and how we big up, again, international audience, give kudos and congratulations to those who have put in the effort to not only complete their path, their levels, their triple crowns, but their distinguished Toastmasters. And for those who went above and beyond, I mean, some people eat, sleep, drink. They get up at odd hours in the night or morning to be at Toastmasters all over all the time. And for those people, it's also important to recognize. In Jamaica, we have a phrase. It says, encouragement sweetens labor. When you're encouraged, it makes your efforts greater. I believe that, and as such, we roll out the red carpet, and we are going to make sure that we're effective to get everyone asked, what's your path? Back to you, our Toastmaster of the day. Thank you, Johnny. That was a very energetic speech. Now it's time for everyone to speak and the person who will be helping us to speak with question is the Table Topics Master. She is Kim Lini. Welcome, Kim. Thank you so much. I am going to ask for a delay. I'm having some pretty severe technical difficulties right now. I will be hopefully get this resolved. It's a my second monitor is not working. I can't access the programs. It's just I don't even know what's going on. But anyway. Can we do something else first? Okay. We can go to the evaluations, maybe? If Jim's ready for his evaluation, yes, that would probably work. Sure. I mean, I could give you a dad joke, but that's not what you need. <laughs> <laughs> I always love to hear a dad joke. Okay. Timer's, re timer's report telling us about the bracket for the time for the evaluation. Yes, Kirtika, um, do you have the timing for Johnny's speech? Of course, she is the only speaker and she has taken six minutes, 41 seconds. Over to you. Thank you, Kirtika. And Jim, are you ready to give us the evaluation for Joni's speech? Sure. Great. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Did you want to introduce the general evaluator and go that route or? Yes, it, it would be a good idea. <laughs> the general evaluator today is Mr. Graham Kearns. Yay! Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you, everybody. My name is Graham Cairns. I am your Vice President of Education, and I am also the General Evaluator for today. Now, normally what would happen in the General Evaluator is that I would give you a summary of the whole meeting, but we haven't had the whole meeting yet, so we're not going to do that. Instead, we'll start with the only formal evaluation that we have for today, and that is Jim Barber, who will be providing an evaluation of Joni's presentation. Now, uh, Madam Timekeeper, if we could have an indication of timing at green at two minutes, amber at two and a half, and red at three. Although we know that Jim will do it almost perfectly within time because he always does. Here he ah. is, the one, the only, don't swoon, he's only human. Here's Jim Baba. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. General Evaluator and my fellow Toastmasters. Joni, so looking forward to doing, to, to evaluating your presentation this evening. And you were everything that I expected you would be. Thank you. I am not going to be able to put the picture that I wanted to do of your presentation up on the screen. I didn't have a chance to do that. But we can use our imaginations. I think everybody saw it. So I'll simply refer to it in your imaginations or in your memory. But before we get to that, let's let's go at your speech itself. 
your, your speech was, let's celebrate a great year. Wonderful. It was a great topic, topical, uh, current, and you presented well. I loved the opening. You opened with music. That's always nice. But you also opened with a red carpet, not just any, not just a picture, but a video of walking down the red carpet. What a terrific way to open your speech. You were, throughout your speech, as you always are, you're conversational, you your presentation was well structured, it was well written, you were prepared, it was well presented. Everything worked in the in regard to those. Yeah, I know. Had a couple of little problems. One of them was your microphone. You had I I assume it's a hardware problem, might be a software problem. Either way, it's beyond your control. So these things happen. That's all right. You you moved the microphone up close to your mouth so that we could hear you. That's one of those things that I'm not going to mark you down for that because it happens. In fact, I'm going to mark you up because you plowed ahead and went with it anyway. You didn't offer excuses. You didn't say, I can't do it. You just went ahead and did it. And you did great. That, that was my one and only great that I'm going to use tonight. However, do have a, do have a suggestion. As I say, I just dropped my microphone. There we go. I do have a suggestion. I loved your opening but it lasted too long. It was incredibly effective to have the, the moving, walking down the red carpet, but then we just kept on walking and kept on walking and kept on walking. If you don't have a different slide to show us, then at least I would like to have seen you moved up to the total part of the image, because what we saw the entire time was you were down here in the corner like that, and we wanted to see you in the middle like this. So. Either go to a different slide, get rid of the uh, red carpet slide, or leave that. I kind of liked it, but move you to the center so that we can see you. That would be a demonstration of its effectiveness. Didn't think I was going to do it, did you? Carolina described you as energetic, and I think that is the single best word to describe your presentations. I would also go with professional and, well, effective. I'll, I'll slip it in twice. But no, this was a great presentation. Don't overdo the opening sequence. Other than that, though, this was great. I loved it. Back to you, Mr. General Evaluator. And thank you very much for that, Jim. Now, do we have Kim back with her table topics? No, we do not. In that case, I'm going to take an executive decision and we are going to test the effectiveness of each of us in coming up with a table topic for another member. I'm going to ask everybody here to come up with a table topic for the person who is to the right of you on the screen. Now, the person to the right of me on the screen is Joni Laidlaw. Now, that may be different to you, but so I'm going to ask a table topic of Joni. And Joni, I'm going to ask you, tell us about a time when you had to make a change on the fly because something wasn't working. So for one to two minutes, Joni Laidlaw, when you had to make a change on the fly. The effectiveness of the online space can give you an entire, well, you know how everybody says you have an issue? I have subscription. At one point I used to say, I'm married to Murphy. You saw it today. It works every time, except now when I need to talk to everybody. But my favorite, and this is online presenter specific, was when I did my presentation. By the way, just a nod, Henry. I was doing presentation mastery, my level five demonstrating expertise. So, you know, I stepped in the building to show off all that I learned. And then the presentation froze. And then nothing would play. And the hours that I spent meticulously creating uploading, having all of these moving images, nothing. 
I do believe I had to start that speech. Do you remember that Richard Pryor special? And I remember kicking myself after because, and I get to correct it now on video. It was actually, I said Eddie Murphy. It's actually Martin Lawrence. Martin Lawrence has a special where he came out in his underwear and he said, I was ready, but the show must go on. And I see Graham nodding, Jim is nodding. For everybody who was here, I cried. I came on early. I tested. I feared. I was ready. Then everything froze. I wasn't ready, but the show must go on. And it did. And I got one of my best evaluations, ironically enough, on presentation mastery, having not, well, presented anything but me and a speech. I guess I'm not going to say back to you, Graham, and I see Tiger right there. So now I make up a question for Tiger. Tiger, how effective is it to be in nature? How effective is it? What was the finish to that? To be in nature. To be in nature. Ah, beautiful. I love nature. This picture is actually taken less than 50 feet away from where I live. I live in a motorhome, in a motorhome park. And directly across the street is a botanical garden. There are over a thousand flowering plants and another hundred conifers or evergreen type plants. This thing is absolutely amazing. And it flowers in the spring, of course, it's outrageous. This is a spring picture. But even now, it's November, it's getting cold. There's still a dozen or more plants that are flowering. It's absolutely sensational. Not only that, but I live near a park where two rivers converge. And these two rivers are fascinating to watch because one comes from a very large lake. So the amount of water that comes down that river is fairly consistent. The other comes from just a drainage, and the amount of water that comes from that is much different. And the colors are much different often. One river will be deep green, the other will be brown, and they mix. It's almost like watching a, a painter. I love going for walks. I am just now, after nine months of back surgery, able to walk again pain-free, which is a very nice experience. I do. Are you ready for this? When I'm walking, I listen to music and I write speeches up here. But then when I get back to my motorhome, I have to write them down quick because I have some timers. Sometimes I remember and sometimes I don't. So if I come up with a great line or a great start to a speech or a great finish, I have to get back and put it down on paper. Otherwise, it's gone. But I love walking in nature. I love the fact that I can now walk again. And I love thinking. And I love working speeches in my head. Thank you. All right. So, Tiger, whoever is on your right, on the right on your screen, give them a table topic. To the right of me is our timer. And I'm, I'm horrible with names. Kratika. So. Kratika. I'm not even going to try to say that. <laughs> but but thank you. Miss Timer. What do you find an effective way of using your free time? Thank you for the topic, uh, the fellow who's master. Um, if I if I could say the effectiveness of using my time would be to indulge myself to read something effectively that engages me, grow me, groom me, and also nourishes my food for thought and the way that is getting uh, excited, uh, excitedly expressed outside. So timing, quite important, was not new to anybody for this matter like once time is gone we will not be able to get it back and we thrive every microsecond of our life to move forward to get into uh, our heels 
to achieve something, to progress something. And I specially have to run 10 times more faster in my life to get effectiveness and to flourish myself towards peace and my well-being. So back to you, Toastmaster. And for right. towards my right is the Toastmaster of the day, Carolina. I would have, I mean, I would have been excited to take care of things myself. What excites you to ask for assistance? What excites you to ask for assistance? Thank you for the question. You mean uh, what things I feel excited to ask for help? Oh, okay. Um, I remember that when I was younger, I didn't like to ask for help because I used to think that I could do everything by myself until the day I realized and I discovered the pleasure of receiving help for someone who is offering you to, to improve the way you are doing something. Because when you are receiving help, you not only improve something that you are doing most of the time, additionally, you gain more time more minutes for doing more things, get more thing, more things done. So if you are asking me what things I like to ask for help, I would say everything. <laughs> everything that a person, if someone wants to offer a help, a, I happily received that offer, but sometimes I have to ask for, for help when I'm having trouble with, with something and I'm happy as well. My answer will be, I'm happy to receive help from, from everyone if that person thinks that he or she can help to do my work better than what I'm doing in that moment. Thank you for the question. My turn. The person I have uh, in my right is, I will reveal the person at the end of my question. The question is, tell me about your main learnings during your life about time management and tell me about the effectiveness of your methods in order to manage your time? And this question goes to Graham. I was afraid this was going to be a question for me because I think I have already mentioned that I have probably the worst time management skills of anybody in this extended Brady Bunch here. Now, Andrew has quite rightly pointed out recently that it's all about discipline. It's all about putting yourself, making a commitment to yourself to actually say you will do something and do it. And that's perfectly correct. And I'm perfectly uh, in agreement with Andrew that that's all what it's all about, except that, of course, I learn more in the, well, uh, yeah, let's, let's just say I don't take all of those lessons to heart. I mean, I take them to heart. I just don't put them into practice. My time management is not as effective as it could be. I loved the Eisenhower method that you proposed before. That is to create a chart which says, if it is urgent and it is important, do it now. If it is not urgent and it is not important, then get rid of it altogether. I was told very early on that you should never handle a piece of paper twice, that you should, if you pick up a piece of paper, you should deal with it then. But of course, what happens then is that you tend to spend all of your time on the stuff that doesn't matter. Whereas the suggestion that if it's important, do it now. If it's not important, if it's important but not urgent, stick it aside until it needs to be done. Brian Tracy, I believe, in his book Eat That Frog, 
says that we all have frogs that need to be eaten. And his suggestion is rather than put off eating the frog until it is the absolute last moment, eat the frog first, get it out of the way. And so everything else works better than that. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure about that. Sometimes I just think I want the frog to go away because otherwise the frog ends up being a toad. And I've spoken last week about how bad toads are. And sometimes I choke on the things that I have to do first. So maybe there's another solution. I don't know. Maybe, maybe just maybe I should win lotto or some form of lottery and then hire somebody to do all the stuff for me. And then I don't have to worry about time management at all. Thank you uh, for the question, Carolina. Now, I'm not going to the person on my right because I've already done that to Joni and Tiger has already spoken, but the next person along in my list is Henry. So Henry, for you, my question is going to be, and we'll stick with time management. Have you ever discovered that you've done something and it didn't need to be done yet? You could have spent more time on it? Tell us about that. When have you done something that you didn't need to and you could have spent more time on it? Henry. Thank you, Toastmaster Graham. So when have I spent time on something that I didn't have to spend time on? Is Did I understand that correct? I think most of the time I spent uh, time on things that I shouldn't have been spending time on. Uh, that's the, the the problem of time management, I guess, is to take your time of the day and if it's not in the calendar, then you shouldn't be spending time on it. And I'm really uh, bad at time management. I agree with you, Graham, um, that I need to Time, put my time into the calendar and make sure that I stick to those time time slots and also not to spend too much time on putting my time into the calendar, if you understand what I'm trying to say. And I think everybody needs to read some or go to some course of some way to understand a bit more of of time management. Um, that's my my piece of advice on time management. Thank you, Graham. Cool. So if you person, can choose the person on your right, yep. Yep, that is Andre. And my topic for him is why must you love someone enough to let them go? Andre, why must you love someone enough to let them go? Oh, thank you very much, Henry, for asking me this provocative question. Absolutely disagree. There is no way you would let go someone you love. Of course, there is the common perception throughout the world. Even in Ukraine, we have a similar expression. In England, there is the similar expression. And I could see even the other side of the world, in Australia and New Zealand. So I'm asking myself a question, just why is that? Who is profiteering from that? What effectiveness of this particular phrase in our life? And I'm coming into my own conclusion that it's just useless in practice. Imagine that telling your wife or your child or your partner, well, listen, I love you that much that I need to let you go. Okay, and you move on to the next one, and to the next one, and to the next one. The, the fear is that using that phrase on a regular basis, you will not be able to get connection, close relationship with anyone in your life. However, Using that phrase, over oh, pints of beer, always oh, your mates on a football grounds. Oh, yeah, come on, man. If you love her, you need to let her go. And you keep on drinking and drinking and getting away from the subjects of the matter. At the same time, I would say I would use it carefully. On the other hand, 
it still bothers me that this phrase prevails in most of the countries in the world. To my mind, if I love someone, I just want to keep it. I wouldn't want to let that go. Back um, to you, Henry, our table suffix master, and then I'll continue. A uh, person on my right is Jim Barber. Jim, what is the absolutely useless thing in time management? Thank you, Mr. Temporary Table Topics Master. What is the most useless thing of time management? Well, I have to address that from a personal point of view because everybody is going to have a different approach. So I, I don't want to speak in generalities. I don't want to speak for somebody else. But for myself, the entire concept of effective time management, it's, a, it's an oxymoron. It's a contradiction in terms. Time management is itself useless. Henry advocated that we should take a time management course. And I think that is a phenomenal idea. Unfortunately, I don't have the time to do it. So what am I going to do if I, if I have abysmal time management skills and I don't have the time to improve them? The con whole concept of time management just falls apart. Besides, we're not talking about something that stays in place. Einstein, and who's going to argue with Einstein? Einstein said that time is relative. So if time is relative, we're trying to pin down something that is, keeps moving around. If you want a, a, a proof of that, Kim just took it away. But if she puts her background back up again, look at the clock behind her background. The second hand is missing 45 seconds out of every minute. See, it's coming around now. It'll be, it'll be here. We're at 12. 13, 14, oh, but came right back at a 55. Now this is time management. And yet, you know, how can you operate in under conditions like that when time isn't staying still, when it isn't consistent, when it's moving around, it's totally unpredictable, which frankly defines my life. And so for me, for me, time management itself is completely useless. Back to you, Andre, however, the right, the person on my right is, let's see, right, nope, right, that way, Andy. Are you there, Andy? I am here. All right, such a deal. Then, keeping with the theme of time management, Andy, what time of the day are you most effective, or what time of the year are you at your most effectiveness? Great question, Jim. I think that because of my background as an emergency physician, having worked all hours of day and night, that I am more effective in the evening or midday than I am in the morning. I'm not a morning person. There's some articles that talk about owls that do their best work at night versus people that get up like robins, get up early in the morning for the worms. So there are different people times that are identified by their circadian rhythm. There is known that there are some very lucky people that have a unique chemistry known as their DNA that they only require four hours of sleep per day. They have a genetic uh, mutation. Ready for the X-Men. There's a mutation that allows them to sleep effectively only four hours a day. For the rest of us, we need at least seven to eight hours a day before we start having problems. What problems do you have from that? You have problems that the military learned that if you deprive someone of sleep and their REM sleep and their stage four sleep, you can make them psychotic in 72 hours. So sleep is very, very important. And it's important to know how you're doing in sleep. But the thing is, is for time management, as was touched on by Jim Barber and several others, is that your consciousness, your ability to think clearly depends upon effective sleep the night before and 
in a period of time, keeping your circadian rhythm true to form. And this is very, very important. Well, the other thing is that productivity studies, and there are some 8 billion of them, it's important to know that there are things known as the Commodore technique, which has identification of how you're doing your studying and concentration, and the techniques of uh, David Allen, getting things done, and others. But there are ways of going through being productive. Back to you, Toastmaster today. Um, so your question, I guess, will be for Stephanie. Andrew, if you can come up with a question for Stephanie. Stephanie, we're in the United States moving into Thanksgiving, and Thanksgiving turkeys have an excessive tryptophan chemical in there that makes you sleepy. Tell us what Thanksgiving stories you have where after eating your dinner with your family, friends, or yourself, that you became very tired and sleepy after having your turkey. Thank you for the question, Andrew. So I am from Belize, as in Central America and the Caribbean. And so we don't do a traditional Thanksgiving the way it's done in the U.S. We do what we call, we call harvest, which is centered around the church. So what we do is for this church service, all the families would bring their produce, anything that they produce in, on the farm, bring it as a form of Thanksgiving. This is how we do Thanksgiving. And then that is shared amongst the members of the congregation and anybody, all the families that are in need. And so we don't center our Thanksgiving around the table or around food. But since moving to the United States, I have been a part of those very hearty, Thanksgiving meals and loving turkey myself, I can understand and appreciate the need for a nap after a Thanksgiving meal. Uh, my first Thanksgiving was in Southern Georgia in Valdosta, which is at the border of Florida and Georgia, very Southern. And so there was mac and cheese and green beans and yams and potatoes and turkey. And you know how the song goes. It was wonderful. Um, needless to say, the whole house took a nap after that Thanksgiving meal. It was a lot to be grateful for, indeed. And uh, the, the nap was also very effective to get us ready for, you know, the second part of the day. Thank you for the question, Andrew. And uh, Stephanie, can you come up with a question for Antoinette? Yes, Antoinette, I have a thought. I'll say that and then you can speak on it. The art of failure, learning, growing and succeeding. And I put that in the chat as well. So the art of failure, learning, growing and succeeding. Thank you very much for that question, Postmaster Stephanie. The art of fear, learning, growing, and the sense of sorry, learning, growing, and what? Succeeding. Succeeding. And personally, I don't think that's the art of fear. When I reflect on my life, especially with respect to the various studies that I did and still doing. Then it comes a point in your life where you must try something and you will fail. You may fail once, twice, three times, but if you have the determination you will still continue to keep trying and eventually you'll be very successful. And when you one is very successful, actually, for me, I am very, very happy. I will tell all my friends about my success more so than my failure. 
And I feel very proud of myself, about myself. As well as I would also encourage people around me, like my friends, family, to continue to study. As we say in the Caribbean, pick up a book and put something in your hand. <laughs> and so that is why I always encourage people to just continue studying and you will be successful. Don't look at it as the art of fear. As a matter of fact, it's the pathway to success. Back to you. Master Stephen. Uh, Antoinette, thank and, you. That. I'm going no. to, uh, rather than get you to hand one over to Kim, who is uh, the only member who hasn't had a chance to speak, uh, we will run out of time if we don't um, move on. Uh, Kim, welcome back. And um, uh, I've, while you've been, uh, while everybody else has been doing table topics, we've been working away in the background. Can I give my thanks to Kritika? Uh, who has agreed to hold off. She was down to do Table Topics next meeting. She will now hold hers off for another meeting after that so that we will get to see Kim's Table Topics next week because I'm really looking forward to it. Kim. Thank you so much, Kritika. If I could take 20 seconds to just say that the time management skills of Murphy are phenomenal. He knows exactly when to do a computer Windows update he knows exactly when to make the the hardware configuration that we just redid completely over the weekend. Just have that one little fatal flaw. So anyway, I, I am very impressed with Murphy. Back to you, Graham. Thank you, uh, Kim. And we'll look forward to your table topics next week. Uh, I'll hand it back to uh, Carolina as the both Toastmaster of the day and also as the vote counter, because she might want to call for a uh, timers report and to see who's eligible to win best table topic. Okay, here is the timing report for the table topics. Uh, the first participant, Yoni, has taken 2 minutes 10 seconds. Second participant, Tiger, 2 minutes 11 seconds. Kritika Devi, 1 minute 18 seconds. Carolina, 1 minute 53 seconds. Graham, 2 minutes 16 seconds. Henry, 1 minute 31 seconds. Andre, 1 minute 59 seconds. Jim, 2 minutes. Andrew, two minutes, 31 seconds. Stephanie, one minute, 46 seconds. And Anthony, one minute, 56 seconds. Which means everybody is qualified. Over to you, gentle evaluator, Graham. Carolina, as um, uh, Toastmaster of the day, do you wish me to continue with the rest of the meeting and then I'll hand it back to you? Um, yes, please, yep. with All the right. evaluations. All right, uh, I'll move on to uh, the evaluations and things and the reports. We we only had one formal evaluation today, and of course that was from Jim, uh, and we heard Jim's evaluation a little earlier, but we do have some other less formal roles that we should be reporting on. For example, we had the grammarian, or actually, no, we'll do the um, R counter first. Who was our um, R counter today? The um, R counter was... Antoinette. Antoinette. <laughs> Antoinette, how did we go with the ums and ahs and uh, filler words? Okay. <laughs> to tell you the truth, I was so fascinated with this meeting and <laughs> listening to every single person talking. And I did not hear many filler words. Back to you. <laughs> Fabulous. There weren't a lot, and those that were, we managed to That's sneak it. in, which is good. Thank you very much, Antoinette. All right, let's move to the grammarian. And uh, Andre, from the flip side of the coin, the flights of language and the turkeys that we had as well. What did we have today? Well, Graeme, I really enjoyed the meeting today. I've been carefully listening to most of the speakers and even guests. And congratulations to our guest, Stephanie, who managed to use the word of the day, effectiveness. And she used it in a sophisticated manner in her table topics. I think that shows a level of skills. Most of the people use the word of the day, effectiveness. It's just proven to be popular. 
However, we have two clear winners. The first one is Jim Barber, who used it three times. And the second is Johnny Laidlaw. She used it three times as well. So congratulations to both of you. At the same time, the few sentences, the few expressions I would like to share with you. One is from Jim Barber. It was, um, no, sorry, Watcher's role is illegal in most clubs. I, I couldn't help just to notice that. Then Johnny Laidlaw, encouragement sweetens labor. Really like that. And then from Critica, nourishes my food for thoughts. It was referring to something that was nourishing her food for thoughts. <laughs> and to me personally, the absolute winner of using the English language for today is Tiger. I have some, no, sorry, I just wrote it down. Yes, I have them too, Tiger, by the way. I have some timers, as he said. Sometimes I remember, sometimes I don't. Don't we all, Tiger? So back to you, Mr. General Evaluator. Thank you, Andre. That's a terrific report there for you as our grammarian. Now, he said that his role would be illegal as a stalker in most clubs, but we're going to find out how well we did in terms of using this environment, which is what Online Presenters is all about. For his Watchers report, please welcome Jim Barber. Thank you, Mr. General Evaluator. This will be brief. I enjoy being watcher. It's so easy at online presenters because we're all professionals. We all do it well. We uh, Everybody is well lit. Everybody is well framed. The only comments that I have is I've already talked about Kim's interesting timepiece in the background that keeps jumping around on time, but that that's not really a watcher thing. And the other is that our general evaluator, Graham, you're a little bit low on the visual frame, either low point your camera down a little bit, there you go, or you sit up a little bit more. But other than that, everybody was terrific. Back to you, Mr. G. Thank you very much for that watcher's report, Jim. And as I say, using this environment is important for us all. That's why we are here in an online presenters club i'd like to thank one of our guests henry for agreeing to be the chat monitor henry is there anything that's come up in the chat that you think is worthy of mention nothing mr general evaluator um i just one thing that i might uh, point out is i think it was quite helpful to post the Table topics into the chat for the person. Yep, mm. that was that's that's all from my end. Thank you very much. Thank you. Maybe that's something that we might like to consider. Thank you for that, uh, Henry. It's a, a good observation. Maybe we like might like to put the topics in the chat as we are uh, if we are topics master, so that uh, the person who gets it gets a chance to see it. As an aside, I and look. You know how you're not supposed to boast about winning competitions and things because, you know, we're all supposed to be humble. Well, I won my Area 5 Table Topics contest on the weekend. I'm actually quite pleased about that, which means I now get to compete in uh, the division. One of the things I really liked about that competition was that not only did we all get the same topic and get shown the topic, uh, as in it was written out on a piece of paper so that we could see it, which avoided the problem that I once saw of a contest, which was where... Five of the contestants answered the question, my favourite teacher, but the sixth contestant answered my favourite T-shirt because they'd misheard the question. Uh, but by placing it on a piece of paper and then on the lectern off to the side, I could then go back to the topic at the end of it, which is something that I really like being able to do, being able to reinforce. So that might be something that you might like to consider. Put the question up in the table topics, in the, the chat. So good advice there. Thank you, Henry. Uh, who, uh, good. I'm glad the R and um count is finished because now I can go um and R as much as I like. Who else did we have that we should be talking about? The chat one. I don't know. We've done that. So my turn to do an evaluation and my turn to do an evaluation first of the evaluator. And that was of Jim. Jim tonight showed his 
effectiveness as an evaluator. He was given two thirds of three quarters of diddly squat time to actually prepare his evaluation. And that's not a lot of time. In a competition, you're given five minutes. In a normal club meeting, you're given perhaps half an hour while the table topics are on. But tonight, Jim had perhaps 30 seconds to prepare his evaluation. And I think he did really well. Jim was flustered to begin. And he was trying to marshal his thoughts but then he picked up really well because he knew the standard structure of an evaluation that works, and that is to provide praise, provide some specific recommendations, and then provide more praise. And he was able to do that, even though he hadn't had a lot of time to think about it. He, for example, praised the, the use of the software and the, the walking down the red carpet, although he also gave some specific advice on how better to use that technology to have Joni as if she were on that red carpet walking down. The one observation I might have asked if I were doing that evaluation is why would that be more effective? Because it draws us into the presentation rather than just saying, here's something I would suggest. Don't tell us just what to do or just how to do it. But I would suggest in an evaluation, tell us why to do it as well, because that's what reinforces things. But I have to say, unflappable was the word that I wrote down about Jim. And again, even with little preparation, he, he gave Joni some really good advice, not only about what she could do to improve this presentation, but what she did well and should continue to do. And that is the sign of a really good evaluator. Today's meeting was a little different. And I like that. I like the fact that when Kim became the victim of Murphy, we just picked up and ran with it despite the fact that we have some guests here who either don't know us well or don't know us at all, we still managed to keep the meeting going and we still managed to get, and I use this advisedly, to get some excellent table topics, to get some truly fine examples of impromptu speaking and of the ability to come up with questions for somebody else. So not only were we answering questions without notice, we were formulating questions without notice as well. I thought that was something that was, was gorgeous and I really appreciated that. I wanna thank everybody here for doing a terrific job of keeping it all together. Uh, and Kim, the only other observation I would make about Murphy is that Murphy was an optimist. There is a corollary to Murphy's Law. Murphy's Law, of course, is that if something can go wrong, it will, and usually at the worst possible moment. The corollary to Murphy's Law is O'Toole's Law, which is that if you want something to go wrong so that you can fix it, it will work perfectly until it doesn't. And Joni told us about that in her table topic, but unfortunately, you were still rebooting and didn't get a chance to hear about that one. That's all I have as general evaluator. I'll hand back to the Toastmaster of the day, who is also our vote counter and may have a vote on the best table topics presenter. Carolina. Thank you, Mr. GE. We have one winner today for the table topics section and I will pass the meeting to our winner to close the meeting. Graham, back to you. Congratulations. Oh, really? Thank you. I thought, oh, well, at least I don't have to worry about it this time because I know I wouldn't have won. Thanks, everybody. OK, look, as the presiding officer, we only have one minute left. I'm going to ask for comments from our guests. First from Stephanie, your first time here. How did you find the meeting? What, did, what, what are you going to take away from us today? Thank you, Graham. I'm going to take away some of the tips for, for the, um, the tip of the day that Jim shared. I took some notes about the Zoom platform and things that I'm going to look into. That was really helpful. As I said earlier, my, my club is looking to add a virtual meeting and I just wanted to get an idea of how it runs and how smoothly it runs. So another thing that I'm taking away is the watcher role, which I had not heard of before. 
Um, even the chat monitor was a great role, I think, for a virtual meeting. So I'm taking away those things. I also found that you guys were very welcoming and I felt very at home and very welcome. And I, I quite enjoyed participating in your meetings. And I'm looking forward to if you invite me to attend in another meeting as a guest. Thank you. We, do we invite uh, Stephanie to come back, do you think, folks? Oh, yes. Yes, Stephanie, you are most welcome at any time. Yeah. Thank you. If, if you can uh, put your, I mean, I imagine that you've probably responded anyway, otherwise you wouldn't be here. But if you can put your uh, email, we'll make sure that Kim has your email. She's our vice president membership and she will let you know all about us. Now, uh, returning uh, the, the prodigal son or the prodigal tiger, as uh, may be the case. Tiger, welcome back. Any observations you'd care to make? <laughs> the prodigal son. Yeah, that's about right. This was wonderful. It's great to see familiar faces. I remember Andre's humor. I remember Jim's fantastic evaluations. Good to see Andrew again. It's really wonderful to see Antoinette. Antoinette, again, my names are horrible. This is a great group. It's nice that you guys have got some young blood in here as well. This has always been one of my favorite groups back in 2020 when i came back to toastmasters this was the group where i learned the most especially about being online along comes covid and guess what we're all online experts i won contest online from what i learned here so i will be back that's a threat and a promise yep yep that's a, that's a threat that we will live with, Tiger, and we look forward to you returning at any time. Uh, it's a pity that Mitash has uh, just gone. I was going to uh, ask him to say a few words, but our last guest, and hopefully about the last time as a guest, uh, Henry. No, only I mean that only because I, I hope he will be a member by the time we <laughs> meet again next time. Uh, Henry, any observations from you today? Uh, it's just, again, really awesome uh, meeting. And every time I come here, just feel a little bit more comfortable uh, saying that uh, I, I saw that today for some reason I felt a little bit more uncomfortable to to speak and uh, the uh, our, our counter didn't pick up my eyes but I picked up my own eyes um, and there's another one so yeah now for some reason I felt a little bit uh, off today with with speaking so yeah but this is this is the safe environment where we learn and and to be better. Yep. Well, well, we 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 look forward to your membership application, and we will. I'm pretty sure be voting yes. But I can't speak for the whole club, but I will speak for me and for most of us here at least. Yeah, we look forward to you being a member. As Vice President of Education, very quick look at the meeting which comes up next week. First up, I want to say thank you very much to uh, Kritika for agreeing to hold off her table topics for a week. And she's going to put herself down to speak next week and move her table topics forward a week because uh, the amazing Kim will be in with table topics next week. What do we have on next week's meeting? We have Toastmaster Mike Woodall. Couldn't be here today. Uh, I'm doing tip of the day. Uh, Kritika has...